Hey everybody, Chris with Overclockers Club. I've got something new here from TrendNet. Okay, so if you know what this is, then you know what it is. But I have to admit, when I first saw it, I actually did not know what it was. I'd never seen one before, so uh, it's all new to me. Of course, it makes perfect sense when you realize what it is. Let me get the plastic off of there because, well, it's still pretty glossy, even without the plastic. But basically, what this does is it lets you run your, uh, your network over an existing coax, uh, like a TV cable. And you might say, well, why would I want to do something like that? I mean, it's just as easy to run Ethernet cables. But in situations, let's say you have an old Victorian home, uh, you've got huge thick oak beams, walls that are the old uh, lath style, and it's just not easy to run Ethernet. But let's just say a long time ago, and this could be the same for an older office, somebody ran uh, coax, your old TV cable, and it's already existing, so it already goes from one end of the house to the other. Well, you could use this little device to take advantage of that, that cabling that's already run uh, through your through your home or your office, and you would connect one end of the cable here and your Ethernet here. There's the power plug for the power adapter, and uh, you'll basically let's see you've got two units here. So what you end up doing. If we look at it this way, so you've got your cable that runs all the way through your house, let's just say from uh, the third level down to the basement, it's already existing, so you connect one end here, the other end here, and then this end would connect to your home network, for example, and the other Ethernet port here uh, would connect to whatever continuation of your network, say on your third floor, uh, would be. So that's really how this works. Now, this particular model here is capable of uh, up to 2.5 gigabit on the transfer speed, which is nice. They have another model out that does one gigabit, but this is the latest and greatest that does two. And these two units here, these are identical, but you do need you do need one at each end for this to really work. And here is the quick installation guide: Ethernet, coax, 2.5 gigabits. So let's see. Okay, let me zoom out a little here. So you can sort of see how a system, this is basically uh, what your system would look like. So this is an example. Uh, so the dotted line here, dashed line I should say, uh, would represent an existing coax uh, cable that's run throughout your house. So uh, let's just say this is your basement, first floor, second floor, for example. And over here, this is where your internet comes in. Here's your router. Uh, and then the first unit here would connect to the coax. And you can see you've got different splitters in different places. And then these are all the same units. All, all three of these actually, all, all three of these, all four of these are the same units. And then you can run your uh, TV down in the basement, for example, your gaming console on the main floor, and you can run your Wi-Fi uh, access point on another branch of your network. And actually, uh, I got a little ahead of myself here. I should have looked at the box first. But one thing, it doesn't really say on the box anywhere, or I didn't see it in the instructions either. Uh, MOCA, M-O-C-A, stands for Multimedia Over Coax. So that's what that really means. And again, it's sort of a special application. Uh, you know, you really have to have a situation where you need it. But So if we look here on the side, actually, let's, let's look at the back first and see what's going on. So, let me zoom back in here. All right, so like I said, you've got 
the situation and the dashed line there represents your existing uh, coax. So what you're doing, you're really just taking your, your Ethernet network and moving it over coax and then picking it back up over here on the other end of your uh, existing coax. And that's really what it does. And again, Mocha is your multimedia over coax. 2.5 is a 2.5 gigabit. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just sort of hook this up. I've got a ton of old coax laying around. And we'll, uh, we'll look at the speeds there going over it. Go over to the English side. Okay, so you get two of the adapters. Uh, supports Mocha over, or 2.5 over coax, backward compatible with version 2, 1.1 and 1.0. Uh, let's see, it's the RJ, yeah, gigabit LAN. Supports up to 16 nodes on one network. Bonded Mocha 2.5 channels provide a net throughput of up to 2.5 gigabits a second over existing coax line designed to connect Ethernet devices to an existing uh, Mocha compliant network, not compatible with DirecTV, DISH, ATT, UVerse, and other non-Mocha compliant subscription services. It's, and it comes with two adapters, and these are usually, let's see, what is it, 12 volt, 1 amp, standard N there, so these are pretty, pretty typical. So what I'll do is I'll dig up my old uh, box of coax cable and uh, set up a run of that so I can get that connected. I gotta make sure I can find my crimpers to get the ends on the cable uh, if they're not in very good shape. And we'll power it up and see what it looks like. All right, well, being the pack rat that I am is paying off because I found my stash of old coax cable and this is some pretty old stuff. I think I, I, think I last used this sometime in the late 90s maybe early 2000s but looks like the ends are on there pretty good so we'll give this a shot all right so I've got both ends connected and running you can see from the activity lights there there's network activity and the coax is showing activity uh, the setup on this is really easy there's nothing to log into there's no username or password there's no account you have to sign up for it's really Plug in the power, plug in your ethernet, plug in your coax, and you are up and running. Now you wanna make sure your coax cables have a good uh, termination on there, a good end, it's crimped properly, it's not loose, uh, and that there's no damage anywhere along your run of uh, coax cable. It's not pinched anywhere or damaged. But you'll be up and running in just a few seconds. I did just measure the cable for anyone who wants to know. And uh, it is 90 feet. I was going to measure that before I hooked it up. I forgot, so disconnected it, took it outside, and measured it. And that is a 90 foot run. And you can see here the connection is almost instantaneous. As soon as you hook it up, there's uh, communication going on. Now, one of the things I really like about what they did. You'll notice the vented sections here at the four corners and not only are they on the top they're also vented on the bottom and very generous on the sides and that's one of the things I noticed on a lot of electronic devices they get so warm especially in the summer and you look at them and they have very very poor venting in my opinion but TrendNet really uh, really got the job right here with the amount of venting in my opinion now some rough dimensions here for anyone who's interested. It is roughly 25 and a half millimeters tall. So call that about an inch tall. And then that dimension there, we're about, uh, about 88 and a half. And that one, we're about 112, almost 113 millimeters there for anyone who's interested in the dimensions. But anyway, the, the venting on this is really nice. It, it's just barely warm. All right, so I'll do a quick speed test and I'm getting the same connection speed. I usually get about 900 is, is my max and I'm getting the same speed that I usually get. So uh, at least I know the connection coming in through the coax uh, is good. Okay, looking at the specification page on the TrendNet uh, website, specifications tab, most of this here probably won't mean a lot to most people unless you're really into the techie side of it. but 
What's important is that it meets the standards, uh, the latest standard here, the Mocha 2.5, and this sort of shows what that means in terms of connection speed, the different levels of the Mocha standard. And again, the latest being 2.5, uh, and the number of devices you can have uh, on a network like this going over coax. Uh, what is also important, if we move down just a little bit here, if your existing coax network at home that you're using uh, for your TV signal, for example, um, it says that it will not work with direct TV, dish network, satellite TV, or AT&T universe, Uverse, not universe, Uverse. So if you've got any of those, uh, the system, it says here, doesn't work with it. Now, my own existing home coax has been disconnected for years. I don't use it. It's just sitting idle. So uh, I can't really test that particular part of the functionality. And down at the very bottom of the page is the standard your mileage will vary kind of statement here that basically says it's the maximum the 2.5 gigabit per second is the maximum theoretical data rate when connected to your uh, bonded mocha 2.5 devices data throughput may vary based on coax wire conditions and quality and that's the same really with with any you know any network and if you take a quick look at amazon as far as pricing goes uh, let me get back there okay so List price was originally $129.99 for this two-pack kit. Uh, it's right now showing $116.99. And of course, pricing on Amazon varies from day to day, almost hour to hour sometimes. You can buy a, a single unit if you want. Let's see if it shows it. Sometimes it doesn't have it. Uh, single adapter. Looks like it's $69.99. And the two-pack is... Uh, roughly double that, but right now it's 116. The other interesting thing here is it has some nice little graphics that sort of show the uh, setup. I'm not sure where these came from, but they're nice little graphics that sort of explain it in a little more detail. All right, so overall, I think this is a, a nice little device. It really fills a special void that you might have uh, if you if you really can't run Ethernet in your in your office or your home and you've already got an existing coax system, this sort of fills that gap quite nicely. It gives you an option that you wouldn't have otherwise. And again, the pricing, uh, really it's not that bad for, for what you get here and what you can do. So this uh, system seems to perform as advertised and uh, I would definitely give it the Overclockers Club Gold Award. So this is Chris with Overclockers Club. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.